felt definitely that we were capable of playing for a national championship. Touchdown, Arnaz Battle. Next thing I know, I'm beating on the locker. I mean, I just lost control. Oh, Floats into the end zone, Bolden. We have reason to believe that it was Adrian McPherson who stole the check. knowing that we were going to win that game together as a team. The season really kind of exposed that football just isn't shoulder pads. It's real life. We don't win this game. Our dreams are shattered. That's a team right there, baby. Don't celebrate. It's how we got to play. Leave it. Leave it. Go out there and beat Army. It's the purest approach of the game is that you come to the ballpark as a member of the team ready to play. The rest of the season lies on our shoulders. How are we going to do it? Good gosh, man, get out there and have some pride in what you're doing. What can our offense do better to make them the best of country? If you play us, what would you fear the most? Does our offense present enough problems and why? I ask it every year. See Bobby Bowden is college football teachers. royalty. From 1987 through 2000, he led the Florida State Seminoles to 14 consecutive top five finishes and two national championships. Then last season, the Seminoles finished eight and four and were ranked 15th. The whispers began. Was this a one-year stumble or the first step in Florida State's slide to the ordinary? As Bowden gathers his coaches in their annual hideaway, they understand their mission. Return the Seminoles to college football's elite. You know how like, everybody get drafted, they go buy these Benzes and Lamborghinis. Why not get an ambulance? <laughs> ain't, nobody, ain't nobody got one. <laughs> Where do you get one? You can buy one, you go to the auction and get one. You know what I'm saying? Ambulance been dinner up. You go get it and fix it up. Y'all laughing. I'm so excited. <laughs> Watch your red roll. Let's go do it. Cool. Florida State will use Let's Roll as a motto this season. Head coach Bobby Bowden said the players embraced the motto after he explained that Todd Beamer, a passenger on Flight 93, September 11th, used the saying to begin a fight against the hijackers. Some have criticized Bowden's move as tacky and fear Let's Roll will appear on merchandise like coffee cups. I thought it was inspiring. And I thought it was, uh, I thought it was motivating, and I think the rest of the guys saw it that way too. We were honored uh, that that Florida State chose to use the uh, the let's roll saying as a motivational, inspirational use for their team. And uh, as long as it's done in a way that uh, is truly respectful of the term, then uh, then we're all supportive of that. Faith and my belief in God to me is the most important thing in my life. I'm going to take my boys to church every year. Every player on my football team, when we go on that bus, we're going to go to church. We're going to go to we're going to go to, to a predominantly black church, and we're going to go to a predominantly white church because I want them to know that they're welcome no matter what. We In eight days from today, our favorite head coach will move one win above and beyond the legendary Bear Bryant when he records win number 324 against Iowa State in the Eddie Robinson Classic. 
That's our Bobby Bowden, and here today is Coach Bowden with his 27th annual State of the Seminole Address. My hero and my favorite head football coach, Bobby Bowden. Why is it this team succeeds and this one doesn't? Chemistry, chemistry, working together, working together, working together. That's why we talk love to our football team. We talk love. That doesn't sound like football, does it? Talking love. Well, that is football. A coach said, come to the edge. The player said, it's too high. The coach said, uh, come to the edge. The player said, it's too dangerous. The coach demanded, come to the edge. The player came to the edge, and the coach pushed him off. And he flew. Now that's what we want this year. Thank you. and built Florida State into a national power by playing anyone, anywhere, at any time. This year, the Seminoles ranked third in the preseason polls, open against Iowa State at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. The seniors enjoy road trips. They fly first class. The coaches fly in, of course, coach. We definitely want to come out and make a statement and uh, you know, show that last year was a learning year for everyone. And uh, through all the adversity, uh, you know, we've learned from that. And uh, you know, the new season starts tomorrow. It's a new season. Uh, all the experience back you would want, all the talent you would want back, coaches, coaches and players. And uh, we're anxious to be back on that field and play some ball. We let all our records get away last year. 14 years worth of records we make get away. 10 wins or more. 58 wins at home. Never lost a conference game in Tallahassee. We let them all get away. Now, men, I want that game back. Now, I'll meet with our offensive coaches tonight, and I'm going to tell them, let it all hang out. I mean, we got it. I mean, we got it. Know someone who loves baseball? Then here's the perfect gift idea. Introducing Hit Away, a brand new... That's what I have what I do for every game right here. You know, they say you look good, you play good, so I'm going to try to look good and play good tomorrow, baby. You feeling all right, man, but Seneca Wallace, man, that joker there. A whole lot of quickness and speed. Go so good on the run. Man, it's crazy. He look like somebody off the PlayStation 2. It's going to hurt, yeah. How many sacks we got? None. That's what we had last year. None. I thought you guys were gonna get some sacks. Good gosh, man, get out there and have some pride in what you're doing. 
Against pressure for Bolden, who makes the catch that may have sealed the deal. What's up, bro? Hey, I listened to you. Yeah. They had you. I put it up there. Good play. See that, Good play. But Seneca Wallace leads the Cyclones to within a touchdown, 38-31, then makes a mad scramble for the goal line as time ticks away. To the 10, to the 5, for the end zone. Ruled out of bounds at the one-yard line. With four seconds on the clock, one play stands between victory and overtime. Runs to the near shot side and the option for the end zone. He did not get in. And Florida State's defense has handed Bobby Bowden a win that sends him past the bear. We're going to uh, present the game ball to Coach Bowden for passing. Bear Bryant is going to, oh, may not mean that much to you right now, but, you know, 20, 30 years down the road, you're going to tell The first home game is against Virginia. The old Seminoles come back to campus, whether they are movie stars or NFL stars. My locker's beside Ray Lewis, and he's talking about how good the Hurricanes are and, you know, what they're going to do. But, you know, I'm sticking with my guys. You guys made me proud. The one thing that made us good was when we walked on that field, we knew that we were the best team on the field. And if you guys would be great, but you can't be great, you've got to have that swag. Out of the shotgun trouble, there's Emmanuel, who takes it down. We're still a team. I'm still a part of this team, or even though I'm not here. Peace is still a part of this team. Guys in the National Football League are still a part of this team. I'm going to support you guys. Everybody's my support. This man's going to lead you. Believe me. He led us. He's going to lead you guys. A quarterback taking his offensive line to dinner is a time-honored football tradition. In the case of Chris Ricks, it's part of building a bridge that spans the country. I say this half-jokingly. He's from a different world. <laughs> he is from Southern California, you know? That is different from South Georgia and South Alabama and, Flo and North Florida. That's just people are different, you know? I always thought I would, was going to play at USC or UCLA, but I knew when, when I got that offer from, from Coach Bowen and Florida State, I, I couldn't pass it up, and uh, it was just a great opportunity to play for a legend. Teammates and friends gather in Ricks' room on the team's Saturday off to watch the Seminoles' biggest rivals, Miami and Florida, go at it. All ACC tackle Brett Williams has his own rooting strategy. I want to see one of them get beat really, really bad and just go through a lot of pain. So I really don't like either one of them at all. So either way, I'm going to be happy to turn out this game. For defensive tackle Darnell Dockett, the Maryland game is a homecoming. His parents died when he was young, and Darnell was raised by his uncle Kevin in the nearby town of Burtonsville. Dockett's teammates want to beat the Terrapins because they are the defending ACC champs. Darnell simply wants to play well in front of his family. Here in the first half, and throw it deep. Tom and Gardner comes back for the ball. Catches the ball. Touchdown, Florida State. Take that, Terrapin. Bring the score up. Bring the score up. Rich taking end zone. Fires away. The game is no contest. The Seminoles coast to a 37-10 victory. Talking about their ACC champs. They ain't never beat up. It was just huge because you was out there with family. You know, out there just, you just feeling good about yourself because you know after that game over, man, you don't get more hugs than anything. I was brought tears in my eyes because I seen all my friends and stuff. It was just like high school. I'm a homebody. I like to be home because that's where all the love is at home. The conference season is back. Look at the dip! Van Alonzo Jackson's biggest fan is his 55 year old father, Eddie. His parents drive down from America's Georgia for the Duke game. Eddie will watch it at their son's home. He's too sick to go to the stadium. My dad doesn't supposed to be here right now. The doctor said he's supposed to not be with me at this point. Eddie Jackson's prostate cancer is spread. His prognosis is terminal. And they... 
Ricks throws the quick swing. Duke hadn't won a conference game since 1999, and Ricks, the 2001 ACC Freshman of the Year, looks like he is throwing against the scout team. 40 fan, you're there. Then Torrance, you're there. Back in on the mic. You got it? We're chasing too many ghosts. Just do what you're supposed to do, and you'll be fine. Get on the ceiling. You got to get your hand grab caught and push him back. With Duke struggling on both sides of the ball, Florida State romps 48-17. Their record stands at 4-0, but Bobby Bowden is not impressed. Blue Devil again for a touchdown! Touchdown, MSU! We're not good enough right now to finish the season undefeated. We're not good enough, you know? Our hopes are is that we'll get better every, every week. What the hell at? What's up, Doc? I'm good. Me and my dad, like, we already had made plans of me and my future before I even got here. And graduating three and a half years was a goal that I really wanted to reach. And I've got it. And ain't nothing to stop me now, baby. <laughs> How can I tell you, man? <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that on TV, man. I don't say it. <laughs> you can't say that on TV. I don't say it. I don't say it. Uh -huh. That's what he wanted. That's what he wanted. I'm going to give it to your dad. You know, for you. Looks weak, so he doesn't. With a short week to prepare for Louisville, offensive coordinator Jeff Bowden, Bobby's youngest son, wants more from his receivers. It ain't sophomores, S O P H, it's S O F T Moors. Sophomores. <laughs> y'all beating them deep every time, but every time when y'all get contact up in the air, y'all aren't coming down with the ball. Think more aggressive. Attack the ball. Despite stumbling to a disappointing 2-2 two and two start, the Louisville Cardinals are a dangerous opponent. Then a drenching rainstorm took away the Seminoles' best asset. If you have a speed advantage, the other team wants to play you in the mud. Anytime it rains that much, it's going to hurt any offense, especially an offense like ours, that we do have so much speed and, you know, it's really going to hinder our passing games. It's almost like playing in a shower, trying to throw a football in a, in a shower in a pool. But the rain doesn't seem to bother Louisville senior quarterback Dave Ragone. With the game tied at 20 at the end of regulation, Florida State gets the ball first in overtime. Ricks gets the first crack. Pump and throw. Intercepted! You can return it and win! The one ball that did get away from me that night uh, cost us, and that couldn't have happened at a worse time. Uh, as soon as I released it, I just wanted to grab it and pull it back, because I, uh, I knew it was going where I didn't want it to go. And the next play, they, they run it for a touchdown. So, tough game, uh, one we all, we all want to forget, and uh, after the game, just, just shock. A lot of times I go home, there'd be a lot of people there. I'd rather go out and bury myself in the yard back there somewhere than, than have to go in and face them. And hear them say, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry you lost. Oh, I wish you, I'm sorry. I don't want to hear that. I don't like sympathy. I've always said our, the reason, the thing that motivates me to win is the fact that we lose. L losses hurt so much, I don't want to lose. I don't think many people should be very surprised about this. I'm starting to get to know this football team, and I don't like them. It has been a conspiracy of incompetence between one Chris Ricks and Jeff Bowden. This is not a unified team. Bert, you are correct. I don't think this is a unified team. This is a dangerous time for Florida State. Now, I do think they will come back and beat Clemson. I'll say that now on a Friday, the day after a loss. That last year, they had a fake punt that worked. It was called back. Florida State versus Clemson. The Bowden Bowl is a great show for everyone in college football, except Bobby Bowden. He must coach against his oldest son, Tommy, and his physical Tigers. You, you can't go in the weight room and just push up, what, 125 pounds or whatever. You got to work out. It shows, man. This is more hurting to me than any game I played against them. Because I simply got to whip it. I, I got to whip it, you know? And he needs to whip me. Mm -hmm. Now, what I'm saying going to win, you know? Yeah. My son is going to lose. Or I'm going to lose. And I ain't going to let me lose. Tommy, was it easier talking to mom this week than dad? 
You, you mean Judas? <laughs> yeah. yeah what, what, Mom? What, what, after the game, we might call her that. I've got to relax. <laughs> I've got to relax. I'm pulling y'all trump card right now. That's mine included. The game starts with the line of scrimmage. And I'm putting on us. The defense line and the offense line. The rest of the season lies on our shoulders. Now, what we going to do with it? Bobby Bowden is renowned for his on-field gimmickry. In this game, however, it is Tommy's team that uses what his dad calls barnyard plays. And Rich got lit up as McNeil came in clean. But this night belongs to the power running of Greg Jones, a bruising 248-pound tailback from Beaufort, South Carolina. His 64-yard run just before halftime sets up the score that put Florida State ahead for good as the Seminoles roll to an easy 48-31 victory. The series stands at dad four, Tommy nothing. You splish and splash, splish and splash. Now your pasta's going down the drain. Shout it, yeah. 6.30 in the morning, we grind. It ain't nothing. Early right. morning, man. People still sleep, man. You know, America? See, y'all like turn on y'all bed, second dream, man. We here grind. Head. Uh, it's Miami week. I mean, when we play Miami, I mean, it's all out war. Everybody's got a chance against everybody. The, the exception seems to be Miami. I mean, no, nobody plays them close. Perfect opportunity for us because we're going out, like you said, nobody, I mean, Corsa is probably going to pick us to lose and all that stuff, too, so, you know. By 50, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they'll, probably be, they'll probably be up there. Chance to shock the world. Shock the world this week. Better shove up three, take that. Better shove up. Don't start off running. Hang up. This is too wide. Linebacker. Being so soft. I get stamped soft. Boy. Ain't nobody soft around here. You were soft then. Ain't, Ain't nobody soft around here. Get to it. Talk about it. The final practice is held in Dope Campbell Stadium, and the coaches pipe in crowd noise to simulate the unfriendly conditions at the Orange Bowl. Nobody's really taking to them physically. Now, what are you going to do tomorrow night? I mean, first, first play, man, it's go get him. You've got to show him who's boss. <coughs> this is the film the pros will want. And they'll grade you every down. Boy, what an opportunity you got. So if they do exchange it... In Bowden's regular Friday night what-if sessions, the game plan is finalized, and the offensive coaches go over every potential situation. The Seminoles are confident that they can run the ball on Miami's defense. In a few hours, they'll find out if they are right. Enjoy the moment. This is why you came to Florida State. Play against the number one team on national television. This is the moment. Florida State executes its game plan to perfection, running all over the Canes. Williams and the offensive line dominate the line of scrimmage, and Greg Jones takes advantage, rushing for 189 yards and a touchdown. Got to run it straight ahead. How about this for a touchdown? Greg Jones, a gut shot by the Seminoles. Florida State leads 26 to 14. Miami roars back, 
Heisman finalist Willis McGahee bottled up all game, uncorks the play that sets up the Canes' go-ahead touchdown. Gathers for the end zone. Touchdown, Hurricane! Miami leads 28-27. Florida State will need a field goal to win, just as it had three times in the last 11 years. Down to the 25-yard line. First down, Florida State. All three of those kicks sailed wide right. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Do they get it off? One second on the clock. It is up to sophomore Xavier Bathia, who had already made two field goals to end the streak and win the game. Bathia, the man in the moment. The kick is away. The kick is no good. It's wide left. in Seminole Nation to an extent. You hate to lose a game like that. It's painful, but it does let you realize that we are a little closer than maybe we thought at being a very, very good football team. Yeah, I feel sorry for Xavier Bethia. I feel sorry for the whole team. I, uh, I really feel bad for him. You know, people could say he choked or whatever, but, like, I think you choke when you get up there and you're like, oh, my gosh, and you're all there. I wasn't there. I was just ready for it, you know what I mean? It, when I hit it, I looked up, and I thought, you know, I thought it was going good. And then I guess it got like midway through the end zone and it looked like a curveball just came straight across. And so it just wasn't meant to be, you know. Oh, man, that's odd. Hey, honey, check this out. Three play. Hey, I'm Brett Williams, offensive tackle for Florida State Seminoles. I'm here to show you my house today, so come on and take a look. Here's where we spend most of our time. This is the this is the living room. Hi, I'm Nick Maddox. Welcome to my room. Come in, I'll show you around. Come on in. It's my TV, 60 inch. I don't get out to the movies much, so I thought I'd bring the movie theater kind of home. I know this is not MTV Krills, but this is where I live at. That's right. We got the PlayStation 2, we got the DVD, VCR, a lot more than most college students have. And they're showing Louisville who beat us this year, so that's not very good. I'm a southern man. I fry chicken. That's all I do. I fry chicken and I fry pork chop. I love fried food. That's what I do. Go in the cabinet here. Up here, you see, we got all of our, our whey protein and all the healthy stuff. And this is good for your freshman and sophomore year in college when you're all about trying to look, look diesel out on the field and all cut up. but. Most offensive linemen will tell you that you can't stick with this too long. It's just too hard to do. So we just moved down here to the, we got the chocolate milk. We start making our brownies. When all else fails, we got a little special treat here that most people don't know about. So we got the ostrich jerky, the barbecue flavor ostrich jerky. Well, I don't know how many football players' houses you've been to, but a house is not complete without a box of Vioxx. OK, now look, I'm going to take in my room. Now, the clothes on the bed, they clean. I just ain't put them up yet. I washed and I just haven't time, have had time to put them up yet. They clean now. Ma, I know you're gonna be mad. It's kind of more my dressy clothes, clothes I wear to class and stuff like that. I got my sweaters here for the winter. I got the Hawaiian shirts for the parties in the summer. The gel I use, Red Kid number 16, style number 16 gel. Got the things that help me get through life, my Bible, and then once again, my Vioxx. These right here are my gold boots with my purple shoelaces. My fraternity stuff. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's my crib, baby. I hope you enjoy my place. I have to ask you guys to leave now. I'll see you all later. Oh, yeah. Goodbye. Tonight is Friday. 
We got Notre Dame tomorrow. Come in at 7 and 0. So, you know, we're going to go out there and play hard and welcome to college football. And they ain't really played nobody yet. So, we'll go out there tomorrow and show them what's up. On October 26th, Notre Dame makes its first ever visit to Tallahassee. Despite the fact that the Irish are undefeated, the 5 and 2 Seminoles are 10 point favorites. The Irish formally announced their presence on the first play of the game. Deep and complete to the 20, the 10, the 5, touchdown Arnaz battle. Florida State hangs tough in the first half, even though Rick's receivers make one key drop after another. Going down deep to Morgan, and Morgan dropped it. The score is tied at 10 at the half. One more half. War, man, battle out there. Two great football teams. Tell by the score, 10-10. 10-10 at the half. You just grow up watching Rudy and stuff, you know? I mean, you, then you play against them, it's just, it's just weird. In a span of less than four minutes of the third quarter, Florida State's season unravels as the Seminoles turn the ball over three times. The Irish are quick to capitalize on the mistakes, converting the gifts into 17 points. Notre Dame leads 34 to 10 when Adrian McPherson replaces Ricks and takes Florida State to two late touchdowns. He throws a dark dramatic. He comes back this way. A flying Willendus to the goal line. Touchdown again. With 12 seconds to go. I think I was talking to Dockett, and then next thing I know, I'm beating on the lock. I mean, I just lost control because I'm so frustrated. I mean, I didn't say any names, but if you were a part of the team, you knew what I was talking about. If you followed the team, you knew exactly what I was talking about. It wasn't until after the Notre Dame game when I sensed that some people were trying to blame it on the quarterback, and I thought that was wrong that people would do that. It comes with the territory. When you win a game, uh, you, get, you get most of the fame and uh, most of the glory. And uh, when you lose, you get most of the ridicule, most of the criticism, most of the blame. Sunday, the seniors got together and we discussed, um, we just brainstormed why we losing. Chris was not coming to all the functions he was supposed to come to as a player, whereas the other kids were lifting weights every morning at 6 o'clock. He wasn't there. They resent that. Well, you know, when you're winning, you get by with anything. The quarterback situation was addressed. And we was like, do you think we need somebody else? We voted, we talked, we voted again, we talked, and we voted again. Okay, so what are we gonna do about it? Let's go to Coach Bowden and let's talk to him and tell him how we feel. We knew that we couldn't change anything, but we wanted to let him know at least how we felt. On Monday, we were supposed to meet with Coach Bowden. We go up there and we started talking to him. And then he said, before you go any further, I already decided I looked at the film, I decided that we need to make a quarterback change. Already, it already been in process since early this morning. I didn't go ask my coaches what we ought to do. I didn't go ask my players what do y'all want to do or what do y'all think we should do. I, didn't, I looked at the film. We watched uh, A.D. McPherson come in there and move the ball in four minutes and get us two scores. Our offensive staff all felt like we need to put this other quarterback in and see if he can get this thing going. Now what happened is our team felt the same way. I remember thinking there's two ways I can I can go about this. Uh, you know, get mad, get frustrated, and uh, rebel against his decision, or kind of swallow my pride and take a deep breath and you know smile and say, okay, I understand. Over the last year and a half, I learned some things from uh, Chris, just watching him on the field and uh, just trying to uh, learn from his mistakes so when I went out, go out there, I don't make the same mistakes. 
Every day, Ameridad helps more people with money. I don't. I don't I'm in a losing years as I could, you know. Now, some people would call eight and four a losing year. I don't. <laughs> you know? First game of the A.D. McPherson era is at Wake Forest. As Chris Ricks watches from the sideline, McPherson, a 19-year-old sophomore, calmly passes for 278 yards and two touchdowns. Senior tailback Nick Maddox runs for 122 yards and a pair of scores as the Seminoles reel off 27 unanswered points to clinch the victory. But the victory was costly as Greg Jones tears up his knee and is lost for the season. A.D. played about like we hoped he would play and about like we thought he would play. He, he's the leader of that person. Never once did I, did I question his confidence in himself and his confidence in us to get the job done. We're still a program that's looking for some answers, and, and uh, A.D. happened to be the, the answer we turned to this time, and it's, you know, it looks like it might be a good, good selection. Questions too. On Agents Day, Florida State invites NFL player agents to tout themselves to the Seminole seniors. The prize recruit is 310-pound All-America tackle Brett Williams, and Daryl Wills of IMG is determined to sign him. We're excited about his future and, and the things that, that are out there for him. And if, and if you put the work in, you'll get the results out of it. Georgia Tech has been a spoiler. They've been a spoiler. They upset uh, NC State last week at NC State. We know all that. Now, they, they've lost the three teams we beat, but the last two games they've won. Todd Williams had 13 intimidations last week, 13 intimidations. How many are you going to get tomorrow? I'll try to match that. I do match it. It's all here, isn't it? It's all here. All of a sudden, he decided to get 13 intimidations, you know? Hey, man, all of us do that. I like to see all of you make it. My parents have... Uh, helped me get through it a lot with me not playing over the last year and a half, so it's been really tough on me. But they've always just told me just to be patient, wait your turn, your time will come. And whenever you get a chance, just make the most of it. And, you know, my chance is, my time is here now, and I'm just trying to make the most of my chance. I'm not even worried about getting hit because I'm behind Big Cat Williams. I know Big Cat Williams will protect me. If I get my quarterback time, our receiver make big plays. Hey, I may not get, I may not get any of the credit. Long after I'm gone, people gonna look back on film and say, "This is how you block." You get pulled up at all for that shot. You got help. Against Georgia Tech, McPherson completes only eight passes, but two go for touchdowns, including this catch and run by Anquan Bolden. This game is won by the defense. Stanford Samuels, beaten on the first play of the Notre Dame game, got that touchdown back in Atlanta. And still on his feet is Stanford Samuels. He needs one block to go the distance. He gets a block there at the 15, to the 10, to the 5, into the end zone. There are no flags on the football field. Samuels had been suspended for the Wake Forest game for an undisclosed violation of team rules, and he celebrates his return with the play that seals the victory. Redemption indeed. And I basically stayed up under, you know, since I'm a little, I'm a little dude, and while he couldn't really see me and, and missed all the, all the linemen, so, you know, and I just made a play. I just had to catch him. Man, I wanted to run so bad, though, man. I know Coach would have ate me up, but I wanted to run so bad. A week later against North Carolina, Adrian McPherson showcases the athleticism that earned him the designation of Florida's Mr. Football and Mr. Basketball when he was in high school. In a little more than three quarters, he throws for 237 yards and four touchdowns. The record is now 8-3, and three, and at long last, it seems as if the team has gelled. Nine and three NC State considers itself a rival for ACC supremacy. Before becoming the Wolfpack's head coach in 2000, Chuck Amato spent 17 years on Bowden's staff, and he helped recruit many of the Florida State players. A year ago, NC State beat the Seminoles at Doak Campbell, so Florida State has a score to settle. More importantly, a win would give the Seminoles the ACC crown and a berth in the BCS. Michael Bulware inside the 20, and he'll score for Florida State. Second down and long for the Knowles. McPherson, backside pressure in the sack. 
Adrian McPherson doesn't look like the same quarterback who started and won the last three games. The Seminole offense fails to score, and NC State wins 17-7. Later that day, Maryland loses to Virginia, and Florida State wins the ACC after all. But the Seminoles do not play like champions, and it's clear the AD train has rolled off the rails. About 11 o'clock the night before the game, I got word that there's a problem. AD is just alerting our coaches to a problem. It was uh, wearing on me heavily, so I decided to go talk to the coaches around uh, 7 after the team dinner. I told them what what happened, and um, they told me they'd get back with me as, uh, and let me know if I was going to play on Saturday. I mean, I told the coaches, I said, now, if this, is, if this happened, I'm not saying we can't play him tonight. We can't play him. But uh, the way he explained it, it didn't happen. Even game day and during the game, it was still weighing heavily on me, but I, I didn't want to not play because I felt I would be letting my teammates down. Gosh, if I had it to go with, I would have... I would have realized there was a burden there and, and not let him play that night just, for, just because of the burden. But I didn't know what the burden was. Arm strength, quickness, agility, and body control. The essential element. Today took an even stranger twist today when Coach Bobby Bowden kicked Adrian McPherson off of the Seminoles team. The school did not divulge why the measure was taken, but the Tallahassee Police Department says it plans to question McPherson as part of a criminal investigation it did hurt me, but it hurts more for him. Here's a kid who's got all the tools in the world, man. Ooh. You know, you can, I, didn't feel like, I didn't feel like we could let him stay on our team. Oh, it hurt. I mean, the biggest thing was I let my parents down. My whole life, they've done everything um, to put me in the right situations. They've given me everything I wanted, and I felt like um, I let them down. On Wednesday, November 27th, McPherson turns himself in to Tallahassee police, who charge him with stealing a blank check, a misdemeanor, and receiving stolen goods after the check was forged and cashed for $3,500. That's a felony. Adrian made a very, very bad decision. He took a check, he thought better of it, and he disposed of that check. That check was subsequently filled in by someone, it was cashed by someone, and the proceeds from that check were maintained by someone. Besides losing a, a teammate, I lost a friend. I mean, like I said, he was, we were pretty close. Uh, you know, and I hate to see something like that happen to anybody, no matter who it is. And, you know, like I said, it hurt me. All the stuff that this team's been through, I think we were kind of numb to it. We just kind of took it as another, you know, you know, there's something else bad that's happening. You know, running the team out here, just leading these guys, I miss it a lot. So um, it's definitely a bless blessing to be back out here. You know, it's not, a, not the circumstances I wanted, but it's stuff we can't control. You know, we got to get ready for Florida now. Despite all the drama swirling around McPherson, Florida State still has to prepare for arch rival Florida. Coming off their worst performance of the year, the Seminoles have to refocus and pull themselves together behind Chris Ricks. It is a daunting task, but Ricks has spent four weeks on the bench reconnecting with his teammates, and the renewed adversity bonds the team tighter than it has been all year. Against Florida, Bobby Bowden proves once again why he is one of college football's legendary coaches. puts on the field is primed and ready. Ricks shows very little rust, passing for 194 yards and two touchdowns. Grossman delivers, batted into the air, and Pope will score a touchdown. In the last game, Florida State plays the way it had expected to play all year. The Seminoles finished the year 9-4, ranked 16th, and they will play Georgia in the Nokia Sugar Bowl on New Year's night. Watching that clock ticking down in that Florida game after all we had been through all season, and especially that week, just knowing that we were going to win that game together as a team. It was a feeling I'll never forget, coming back and, and playing with the, guys, with the guys one more time this season, with those seniors going out to battle with them and, uh, and emerging victorious. It was something I'll never forget.
That's a great one. We really needed that win, didn't we? We really needed that win. But you look like the old time Florida State teams. You look like the old Florida State football team. Maybe that. In graduation ceremonies on December 14th, quarterback Stanford Samuels and offensive tackle Todd Williams take the walk. So does one other Seminole, fulfilling a promise to his father. So Jackson. There you go, Dad. Let's show that pop. College football news, Florida State will not have the services of quarterback uh, Chris Ricks in the Sugar Bowl January 1st against Georgia. Ricks received an automatic suspension after sleeping through a religion exam. Uh, my dad had a health condition this season and has gotten worse of recent times. And uh, being worried for him and, and the family being concerned for him. Uh, hit at a, at a, couldn't have hit at a worse time finals week, uh, being the climax of, of his condition. And not to use it as an excuse, but uh, definitely a reason played a part in me missing my exam. And my dad is going through a tough time right now, and I'm trying to help him out as, as much as possible. A gambling investigation at Florida State does not extend to other students or anyone else connected to the university. It focuses solely on former Seminole quarterback Adrian McPherson. His lawyer claims his client has never bet on a sporting event and calls the new allegations, quote, a non-issue. When they say the target of our investigation is Adrian McPherson, technically they're right. But what have they discovered other than that, I think doesn't really focus on Adrian McPherson. On December 22nd, defensive tackle Darnell Dockett is suspended from the Sugar Bowl for violating an undisclosed team rule. When you have a few uh, football players, as we have in, in this instance recently, make poor choices, it demonstrates a lack of respect, in my opinion, for teammates and, and coaches and, and other people who care so much. Uh, about our program and our university. In the time that uh, Darnell Dockett and Chris Ricks were suspended last week, that's about a four-day period of time, there were seven teams in the country, at least seven teams in the country, that had players arrested, suspended, or investigated. So it's not happening just at Florida State. We are a very high-profile program. And, uh, and, and we have a lot of stars on our football team. And when something happens to a star, it's going to get national attention. If we were Owen, if we were one in 10 every year or, you know, never in a bowl game or unheard of, uh, y'all wouldn't be interested in covering it. Just because I'm not with the team, you know, I still follow the team. I still have a lot of friends up there. I still uh, love FSU. My whole thing right now is uh, just getting everything squared away, and hopefully, in the end, I can get a chance to sit down and talk to Coach Bowden and hopefully get a chance to go back to FSU. Because like I said, um, when I came out of high school, I loved the program, I loved the, the fans, and different things like that, and I still feel the same way. These are just tests and trials that, as a program and as a team, that we've gone through. But in the end, Florida State will be successful. I promise you that.